This is gonna be the part two of me installing my ground and bonding system. Part one was me doing most of the digging and ground rod drilling, and I got all that done now, so we're gonna be wiring up everything. So let's go ahead and get to it. I don't know what happened to the footage here. Uh, it, it went away into the ether. I know I recorded it, but what I'm gonna be doing here is taking the sprinkler uh, cylinder covers and we're gonna be trimming them down from 12 feet because I'm lazy, I don't wanna dig down 12 feet. And we're gonna trim them down to about four to five feet. And then uh, we are going to drill holes on either side. And this is gonna be able to pass the wire through, the grounding wire through. And um, I'm going to trench, so everything's gonna be covered. And um, we're not gonna see it on the surface for the most part. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. And now we're in the garage and we're gonna be cutting the sprinkler cap things into about three to four inch sections. And I say we because my brother's gonna do it. But He's told me I'm not allowed to use power drills or tools anymore on my channel. Next, we're gonna do the bonding itself. I have the copper wire here, and um, I unwound 80 feet of it, and it was a pun, kind of a pain in the butt. And I'm going to attach it to the house ground, and then I'm gonna start running it around the house. But before I attach it, I'm gonna to need to run, since I'm gonna do this all in one strand, all the connecting bolts, and these, which I need to drill holes. I forgot to drill holes on this last night. Drill holes through here so that they're all hidden in the ground. One down. down there we go now that we got the holes drilled let's go ahead and continue running the wire so what I'm going to be doing I'm going to run the wire through one hole then the locking lug to the grounding rod and then out the other side and then now it's on one, I don't have to cut it and um, put it back all together. So let's, keep, let's do this. Okay, so this is the first one. Let me go ahead and talk through this. I have the grounding wire already ran through the bucket that we already cut a hole through, and then the locking nug in the middle. So what we're gonna do is bend the wire a little bit so that we can get it onto the grounding rod, put this in the hole, cover everything up, and rinse and repeat two more times. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting close to being done. Here we go. Ugh, perfect. 
Perfect. With that locked in place now, um, we just need to run the other one and that gives us a good anchor point so that when we can stomp down the, the wire onto the ground and make sure it's perfectly on the ground and I'm not gonna poke up anywhere and I know it's not going to pull the rest of it. So rinse and repeat, that was beautiful. A little hard kinking the wire to get it down there, but we got it done. Perfect. Love it. Turn it a bit. And that stick method was working okay until it got here. And it's just too, too close so I can't shove it in there. But I think I can come back here and get it in and then just shove it all the way in. All right, next problem is this bracket that is attaching my rail to the um, house here. Don't have the bit anymore to unscrew that. So my solution is I'm gonna remove the bucket that's already on the wire and uh, run it all the way out, feed the wire between the house and the bracket and put that back in. It's not gonna be too bad. It's only about 15 feet or 10 feet left on this wire, so. Good estimations. Well, I wasn't watching where that locking nut fell. And I am trying to find it. Do -do -do -do. Where did it, aha, here we go. Thought it would just be arbitrary to find this in the ground, but it wasn't. Cause it blended in with the leaves and everything else. Last one, last one. I got all that sorted before I put this back on. I was looking at the hole and I thought it would be nicer to have a third hole here, run it in and out instead of on the other side, closer and pointing to the house. So it can pretty much go then straight up to the wall and up the wall. Sweet, it's coming a thing. All right, so I just performed the twist here. So we got a uh, 90 degree bend almost and a 90 degree bend. Then we got this locking lug nut. You take the locking lug nut, turn it where it's flat against the 90 degrees, then it simply, bam, look at that, pulls it right on in to the ground rod. Wow. All right, we're just gonna review one more time. This is hole number one at the base of the chimney. That's gonna be the main point where the grounding rod is gonna come in. I got about another eight feet-ish or 10 feet left. I'm just gonna wind that up and just put it all right here for now. That way I can do one nice run right up to the junction box when I install that maybe later this month, we'll see. Then from there, I got a little bit of trench going on against the back wall and it's ran underneath my deck all the way underneath it and between the crack in the house. And then coming out here, it's gonna go in the junction box number two and that has my grounding rod number two in it. And this is one solid strand all the way through and trench to box number three sent here right here and um, that is again um, one solid line not cut it's just uh, sandwiched in there very nicely and trenched around the house to the installed ground rod of the electrician did <laughs> i'm feeling it i'm so close to done the only thing left is to fill in the trenches wind up the wire and um, fill in the holes what I'm so close, this is gonna be so much cool. So we're gonna cap it, fill it in the rest with dirt. ever want to come out and inspect the line to see if it's still good just open this guy up look out for snakes and 
There it is. <laughs> Beautiful. Here we go, the final walkthrough from the end to the beginning. We have the termination point for my line, and that's where the my line bounds to the house ground. And I just kind of left it on the ground there because nothing ever grows. And then it goes underneath there, and we got it trenched all the way around, blind and sun, to junction box number one, bam. And then it's trenched down around to junction box number two, right there so i'm walking around for the deck for the final time if you like this go ahead and drop a comment and i know i don't say this in my videos a lot like and subscribe especially if you're still around because i don't know how long this video is going to be finally we see a little bit of squig right there of a copper silver line going between the house and to grounding point number three which is to be honest grounding point number one from the antenna it's going to be way on top of that chimney. <laughs> Can't believe I did a thing. I did a thing. So this is the end of this video. Thank you all for watching and watch me install this in two days. Two days, not that bad. Would have had it done in one day if I, if I rented the 20 pound demolition hammer the first time. I wanted to, but there's a snafu in the drill bit. But um, it is what it is. But um, coming up next, I think I'm going to install the antenna mount on the roof and then the junction boxes i don't know what order those are going to happen it's just how i can get people scheduled i'm probably going to have a couple friends come by and help me with the that part because i'm going to need to get on ladders and on the roof and i'm scared to be on the roof and um <laughs> well thank you all for watching i appreciate it and as always go forth and conquer and let your brother do all the power tools for you